The Just So Stories by Rudyard Kipling. How the Camel Got His Hump. Now, this is the next tale, and it tells how the camel got his big hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work, and besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most scruciating idle, and when anybody spoke to him, he said, Humph, just humph, and no more. Presently the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth, and said, Camel, O oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man. Presently the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, O oh camel, "'Come and fetch and carry like the rest of us.' "'Humph!' said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man. "'Presently the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck and said, "'Camel, O oh camel, come and plough like the rest of us.' "'Humph!' said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. "'At the end of the day the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, oh three, I'm very sorry for you, with the world so new and all, but that hump thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now, so I am going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, with the world so new and all, and they held a palaver, and an indaba, and a punchayat, and a powwow on the edge of the desert, and the camel came chewing on milkweed most scruciating idle, and laughed at them. Then he said, Humph! and went away again. Presently there came along the djinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Djinns always travel that way because it is magic, and he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Djinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle? "'with the world so new and all.' "'Certainly not,' said the djinn. "'Well,' said the horse, "'there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, "'and he's a howler himself, "'with a long neck and long legs, "'and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. "'He won't trot.' "'Whew!' said the djinn, whistling. "'That's my camel, for all the gold in Arabia. "'What does he say about it?' "'He says, humph said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph, and he won't plough, said the ox. Very good, said the djinn. I'll humph him if you will kindly wait a minute. The djinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak, and took a bearing across the desert, and found the camel most scruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. "'My long and bubbling friend,' said the djinn, "'what's this I hear of your doing no work, "'with the world so new and all?' Humph said the camel. "'The djinn sat down with his chin in his hand "'and began to think a great magic, "'while the camel looked at his own reflection "'in the pool of water. "'You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning, "'all on account of your scruciating idleness,' said the djinn and he went on thinking magics, with his chin in his hand. "'Humph!' said the camel. "'I shouldn't say that again if I were you,' said the djinn. "'You might say it once too often. "'Bubbles, I want you to work.' And the camel said, "'Humph!' again, but no sooner had he said it than he saw his back, that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great, big, lolloping humph do you see that said the djinn that's your very own humph that you've brought upon your very own self by not working today is thursday and you've done no work since monday when the work began now you are going to work how can i said the camel with this humph on my back that's made a purpose said the djinn all because you missed those three days "'You will be able to work now for three days without eating, "'because you can live on your humph, 
and don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert, and go to the three, and behave. Humph yourself. And the camel humphed himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this the camel always wears a humph. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave. The camel's hump is an ugly lump, which well you may see at the zoo, but uglier yet is the hump we get from having too little to do. Kitties and grown-ups too, if we haven't enough to do, we get the hump, camellius hump, the hump that is black and blue. We climb out of bed with a frowsily head and a snarly yarly voice. We shiver and scowl and we grunt and we growl at our bath and our boots and our toys. And there ought to be a corner for me, and I know there is one for you, when we get the hump, camellius hump, the hump that is black and blue. The cure for this ill is not to sit still or froust with a book by the fire, but to take a large hoe, and a shovel also, and dig till you gently perspire. And then you will find that the sun and the wind, and the gin of the garden too, have lifted the hump, the horrible hump, the hump that is black and blue. I get it as well as you, if I haven't enough to do. We all get hump, camellius hump. Kiddies and grown-ups, too. End of How the Camel Got His Hump Read by Kara Schallenberg on May 22, 2007 In Oceanside, California